Station wagons or estate cars, they've never really been all that popular in India, right? Actually, there's a very simple reason for that. SUVs. You see, SUVs offer the same sort of practicality as an estate car in a more desirable body style. They also offer more road presence, the possibility of seven seats, and even the possibility of some off-roading ability. Lately, however, station wagons have been making a small comeback. And who better to lead the renaissance than the maker of some of the most famous station wagons of all time? Say hello, everyone, to the Volvo V90 Cross Country. The V90 is the station wagon version of the S90 sedan and the Cross Country is the rugged version of the V90. Up to the rear doors, the basic shape is more or less identical to the S90, but the V90 makes a departure from the boxy Volvo estates of the past, with a sleek profile that culminates in a sloping rear windscreen and some striking L-shaped LED tail lamps. For the cross country, Volvo has toughened up the design with some grey cladding and more rugged looking bumpers. While a set of handsome 20-inch wheels, which are standard by the way, fill out the large wheel arches nicely. The estate body style has traditionally not done well in India, but the V90 you'll agree is one of the prettiest interpretations of it in a long time. And because it's a cross country, the SUV-like rugged bits should appeal to Indian buyers too. And the news just gets better once you step inside. The cabin is of course based on the S90 sedan, which in turn was based on the path-breaking new XC90. The dashboard has the same minimalistic theme with a 9-inch portrait touchscreen replacing most of the physical buttons. The wood veneer on the dash and doors has been replaced by lovely woven aluminium panels. And as ever, the quality in here is just sublime, and it all makes you feel really special. The front seats are similar to the S90s, heated and superbly supportive, with electric adjust for the bolsters, lumbar support and extendable squabs. But the V90 takes it a step further with a cooling function and a massage feature. But the big draw of the wagon body style is the added practicality of a massive boot. What you get is 560 litres of wide and flat storage space. But should the need arise, the seats can be dropped electrically to increase that number to 1,526 litres. And yes, tucked conveniently under the loading area is a space saver spare tyre. And while we're on the subject of space, let's just see how much of it there is in the back seat. The back seat of the V90 Cross Country will be very familiar if you've ever been in the back seat of an S90. And that is to say, it's one bugbear does remain, and that's a slight lack of thigh support. However, all the strengths remain too. Look at the amount of knee room I have here, and the headroom is even greater thanks to the roof that stretches so much further behind. As with the front as well, it is a very, very nice place to be with a superb cabin ambience. However, while comfort is top class, a fifth passenger in the middle will have to contend with the wide central tunnel, eating into their legroom. Now the other thing the V90 Cross Country has in common with the S90 is having steel springs at the front and air suspension at the rear. And of course, that affects the way it rides. Thanks to this combination of suspension, the ride overall is really very, very comfortable, with only really sharp bumps catching it out. So this is one of Volvo's cross-country models, and as you've seen, it certainly looks the part. But Volvo says this one packs in the hardware to do not serious off-roading, but some pretty convincing soft-roading. It's got four-wheel drive, and the ground clearance has been raised by 60 millimeters to a whopping 210 millimeters. So yes, it can certainly handle a rough country road. Volvo, however, says it can do a lot more than just that. Put it in off-road mode, which works up to 40 kph, and it will distribute power where it's needed via AWD, and it will activate hill descent control. 
The ground clearance should be more than enough for most owners and frankly, the only thing that let it down slightly was the set of sporty, road-focused Pirelli tyres. Now the cross-country variants have actually done really well for Volvo here in India. In fact, the S60 cross-country now outsells the standard S60 sedan by a big margin. What you get in essence is something halfway between a regular sedan or hatchback and a full-on SUV. You get a bit more rugged looks and also a little bit more practicality. But let's face it, these cars will only get a taste of the rough stuff once in a blue moon, right? So it's out on the tarmac where most V90 cross countries will really spend most of their time. So let's tell you what it's like out here. Now the cross country cars are meant to bridge the gap between the sedans and the SUVs and from the driver's seat that's exactly what this car feels like. You don't get quite the same commanding drive position as you do in an XC90 but you aren't quite as low to the ground as in an S90. That said, it shares a lot of its driving characteristics with both those cars. Like those cars, this isn't the most thrilling to drive. Yes, the steering is accurate, well-weighted and light enough when you need it to be, but it's not bristling with feel and feels a little bit inert going around corners. That said, because like the S90, this car has air suspension only at the rear and not at the front, the front end feels a lot more uncorrupted than it does in the XC90 which has air suspension at all four corners. And on the flip side, because like the XC90 this car has all wheel drive, you get a lot of confidence and grip in the corners. And the best part is that it does all this with very little body roll or body movement. So yes, while it might not be the last word in handling like a BMW is, it does at least have a lot of grip and you can have a reasonable amount of fun going up a mountain in it. So like the other 90 series Volvos, this one too uses a 2-litre four-cylinder diesel engine. But unlike the S90, which has the D4 engine with 190 horsepower, this one has the D5 engine from the XC90 with 235 horsepower and 480 newton meters of torque. So this motor is as you remember it in the other 90 series cars. It's very smooth, it's got a nice wide power band and there is no hiccup in the power delivery as such. It's also quite refined. Yes, there is a bit of diesel grumble, but it's not at all harsh and you only really hear it loudly after about 4000 rpm. Now one thing you can never call this engine is sporty. Yes, it's got the power, it's got the speed, but it masks it just so well. As a result, it never really makes you want to go for it and put your foot down really hard on a winding road. It's a similar story with the 8-speed automatic gearbox, which is just a bit too slow to react to be a truly thrilling experience out on a fast road. Now, unlike the regular S90 and XC90, this car comes with paddle shifters and that is truly a welcome change because it does at least let you take control of the gearbox when you want to drive a bit quickly. Now, Volvo's new policy with its cars is to launch them first in a flagship top spec variant and then maybe introduce lower trims later on. So, this V90 cross-country inscription is fully loaded. It's got four zone auto climate control, a massive panoramic sunroof, a heads up display, digital dials, a heated steering wheel, real leather upholstery, and of course, the magnificent sounding Bowers and Wilkins surround audio system. In fact, there's so much equipment on this car, I'm going to have to list it out for you. Volvo has often played follow-up in the Indian market since it opened shop here, but the V90 Cross Country leads the way and opens up a new category altogether. It really is a halfway point between the S90 and XC90 as a product, with rugged looks and abilities, but also car-like driving dynamics and loads of luxury. It's expected to wedge between those two siblings on price too, 
at an estimated 60 to 65 lakh rupees ex showroom. Volvo knows it won't sell as well as its more conventional stablemates, but is still confident of moving at least 200 cars before the end of 2017. And take it from us, if you're in the market for either a luxury sedan or SUV, the V90 Cross Country truly gives you the best of both worlds.